Whether you think of the TV show Frasier, Pearl Jam and the grunge music scene, or the Seahawks, most people have an image of Seattle and its iconic skyline punctuated by the Space Needle. The jewel in America's Pacific Northwest, known as the Emerald City, is one of the nation's busier ports, with nearby Tacoma and Seattle operating under a single banner. It's also a major tourism destination, and Argosy Cruises is the biggest name in the cruise game around here. Argosy offers harbor tours and a cruise through the locks into Lake Union, but we're heading out to Blake Island on the Tillicum Cruise. This one brings you back in time to get in touch with the first peoples of the area and learn about the maritime history that predates the European settlers by thousands of years. No matter what you do, you're blissfully unaware of how you get there. That's a captain's problem, and one that back in the day could pose a bit of an actual problem, especially on misty or foggy mornings before advanced electronics. Captain Charlie Vogel has been with Argosy since 1971 and has seen it all. You knew exactly what course it was, and you always ran one speed, so you knew the times, and you would just run predicted log out here, make the turns, go like, okay, we're getting close, and then the original dock here at Blake Island was a, a wharf with a float outside and you'd call up the island staff and they'd go down there with pots and pans and beat the pots and pans together when you got close and you'd follow that into the, the dock and tie up. That's not an issue anymore and it's certainly not one today with clear and sunny skies. Immediately off the boat, first stop is a snack of clams in a warm broth. And apparently crushing the shells brings good luck. Bam. You want to give me a Powerball ticket now. Moving inside for lunch, the salmon is cooking in a traditional method over fire, and everyone eats in the Longhouse performance room before showtime. Something we were asked not to film. But it had history and stories and traditional song and dance from various First Nations in the Pacific Northwest, including dances with massive wooden bird heads. Our biggest being 600 feet tall, but uh, 45 to 50 pounds. Cool. And this one's the baby, this one's only 25 pounds. This is the baby? Yeah. <laughs> I know. My neck hurts thinking about it. So I'll be, I'll be back in half an hour, just right, right there, okay? <laughs> just stay one spot. Frank Mather is one of the performers, and he understandably takes a lot of pride in his role. My goal was always to teach, um, to take something home with them, something more than uh, a trinket that you buy from a gift shop. A lot of people don't experience Native American culture, and I, I hope this is a good eye-opener. Something's richer than what you kind of paid for. Wow, I didn't know Chief Seattle was this rumored birthplace here at Blake Island. Something they get to teach their family, like, oh, you should really come here. After the performance, you're free to wander the island for a little bit and soak up the serenity. Not far from the city, but far from the hustle and bustle of urban life. The trip ends with the seven and a half nautical mile run back to Seattle and back to the modern world. Of course, from the water is almost always where you get the best skyline views. But being a passenger is only half the fun of being on the water. I wanted to get behind the wheel. So we headed over to the docks on Lake Union. One of the best ways to find out about the local boating scene is to go boating with the local. And I have found one. This is my friend Ben. Ben, how are you? How you doing? Great to have you. Thanks for having us out here. First of all, uh, what kind of boat are we on? We are on a uh, 2004 Sea Ray Sundancer 42. In terms of boats in Seattle, is this sort of average size, big, small? Where does this fall? Uh, this is kind of on the average side, yeah. There's definitely a lot of uh, smaller, you know, ski wakeboard boats, and then there's definitely some larger uh, pilot house, 60 to 80 footers around the area as well. Right away, you spot something uniquely Seattle, the houseboat community. No rusty old barges, some are three stories and worth millions. And if you remember the movie Sleepless in Seattle, well, that houseboat is still here too. It definitely started back in the 20s during the Great Depression. People started building these structures on uh, floating logs and uh, it just kind of morphed into this own little community and connects more people to the water. They all have boats. They have boats outside of their, their floating homes. But these fancy float homes are nothing compared to the eastern shore of Lake Washington that you reach by cruising through the Montlake Cut. So this area we're cruising past now is Medina. It's a very swanky, rich area. In fact, right there, 
is uh, Bill Gates' house, founder of Microsoft. Would have thought there'd be more windows. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I'm here all day. Try the roast beef. <laughs> Later in the show, we'll come back to Seattle and continue our exploration of the lakes and check out one of the most impressive yacht clubs in the country. Seattle is the largest city in Washington state and the greater Seattle area is the largest by population in the entire Pacific Northwest, edging even Vancouver, BC. As such, it's a tourism hotspot. The Pike Place Market overlooking Elliott Bay is one of the oldest continuously operated farmers markets in the United States, having been here since 1907. And across the street is the location of the first ever Starbucks. But caffeine aside, the water has always been key here. From passenger transport to cargo port to today's booming recreation scene. Dating back to 1892, the Seattle Yacht Club is one of the oldest on the Pacific coast. Originally founded with 250 self-described yachting gentlemen, it now boasts 5,000 members, including lots of families. I grew up on boats with my dad. We had a ski boat and then a big power boat. And then I got into it with my husband. We have a 37-foot Carver Voyager now that we love and the kids love. And we just took it all the way up to Canada this year, all as far, as far north as where? Ovens Island. Ovens Island, which was fantastic. We stopped in Ganges, Salt Springs, and did all the San Juans up and down. It was an amazing trip, 17 days total. There are 10 proper outstations owned by the club, spread across Washington State and British Columbia. And they range from one that's just a dock to one that's a fully staffed 50-slip facility. Originally on Elliott Bay in downtown Seattle, there were two separate clubs that joined together. They've been at the current location for nearly a century, and the main clubhouse is a beautiful spot that's chock full of history. Took the name of Seattle Yacht Club, and then we moved in here in 1920 after the canal was cut through from Portage Bay to Lake Washington, which allowed transit from the Sound into Lake Washington. And... Rear Commodore Ted Schultz hasn't been around that long, but he still has seen some major changes. Over the years, the number of sailboats has dropped off, the number of powerboats has increased. When I joined the club in the 1970s, a 40-foot boat was a pretty good-sized boat. Now a 50-foot boat's an entry-level boat. A unique feature is that you can enjoy both fresh and saltwater boating here in the same day, on the same boat if you want, by going through the Ballard Locks. I'm told this carries more boat traffic than any other lock in the United States, and completed in 1917, it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places, all while remaining operational for commercial and recreational traffic. Also here, on the south side of the channel, is the fish ladder to allow the salmon to work their way back and forth. We didn't catch any on video, but I did snap a photo of one mid-jump. But that's on the far western side of Lake Union, and that takes you into Puget Sound. Back in Portage Bay, we're out again with Ben in his sea rig, leaving the Yacht Club and heading east through the Montlake Cut. So in terms of where we're coming out on Lake Washington, are we kind of like in the middle, or are we further north or yep. south? You're about in the middle. So you got about 15 miles each way, roughly. You're probably a little bit towards the northern end of it. Bisecting the lake is the Evergreen Point Floating Bridge. 2.35 kilometers, or 7,700 feet long, it's the world's longest floating bridge, with the majority of it floating on 77 concrete pontoons. This design was chosen because the muddy bottom made securing stable bases for a suspension bridge just too difficult. Not far away from the Yacht Club is Husky Stadium, where the University of Washington's football team plays. The waterfront location is one of just a handful like it in the country, meaning the tailgating scene is half on the water and known as sailgating. Yeah, you can see field goals and stuff like that. And most of the time, the people don't even go to the game. They're just watching the game on their boat and have a good time on the boat. Heading back into Lake Union, it's hard not to be struck by how connected all of Seattle is to the water. From yacht clubs to float planes, salt water and fresh water, from the epic waterfront skyline to the gorgeous floating homes, and from canoes to kayaks 
to Megayachts. If it has anything to do with the water and you can think of it, chances are you'll find it somewhere here in the Emerald City.